everybody. Um, we're here to read another story. Let me say hi. Hi. I'm with my lovely uh, audience assistants again, Maddie and Isla. Isla. And uh, we're going to read our first Silver Birch Express book. Now, Silver Birch Express is a part of the Force of Reading, uh, which is a part of the OLA, the Ontario Library Association, and they release 10 stories as well. Now, the Silver Birch Express is kind of in between. I read those books to my grade two and three students. Anyone can watch this video. Um, this story is a book that is for everyone. Not all of my Silver Birch Express books are. Some of the younger kids may not like some of them, but this one is one that everyone can listen to, and it's a good one. Um, there are ten of them. There are seven kind of picture books and three chapter books. The chapter books will be a little bit difficult, but we're going to figure out a way to get that out to people uh, for sure. But the one we're going to read today is Light a Candle, and it's one of our ten Silver Birch Express books. And students uh, get to listen to them all, and then they get to vote on their favorite. And we'll have voting in June, um, and I do Google Forms that way for us to do. So that's how we're going to vote. But this is the first one. Have a listen and see. This book is written in... English and Swahili. I can't speak Swahili. Can you speak Swahili? No. Can you speak Swahili? No. You can? Oh, good. So I, if I have any problems, I will ask Maddie, who knows Swahili. It's written by uh, Godfrey Kangolo and Eric Walters. Eric Walters does the English parts of it, obviously. And Eva Campbell does the illustrations. It's a really interesting story. It is not... Okay. It is not a true story. Um, is based on true events. It is based a on when Tanzania became a country. It used to be Tanganyika and Zanzibar, and they won their independence in 1961, so uh, just under 60 years ago, about 59 years ago. Um, and it takes place around Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the tallest mountain in Africa. Uh, I can tell already I'm rambling too much as we start in, but I like to get that little bit of historical uh, analysis and things from there. And we'll talk a bit about those things as we go. But if you guys want to sit in your audience seats, I will start to read Light a Candle. I will sit in your spot. Thank you. All right, here it is. Light a Candle. And there is the country of Tanzania. There's lots of amazing animals that you can find in Tanzania, like giraffes and elephants and lions. And there's Mount Kilimanjaro, and there is where the story takes place with the people, the Chaga people. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Light a candle. That's this thing. Nagama saw the car coming down the road. As it drove by, he waved, and the man in the back seat waved back. Nagama didn't know him, but he knew he had come from Nagama's village. Few cars went to their village, and he hurried home to hear why it had been there. So, must have had big news. We'll find out who this gentleman is. He's a pretty famous and important part of the story later. Everyone was gathering in the clearing in the middle of the village. Women and children clustered at the sides, and men stood in the center. In between were the boys who were too old to be children, but not old enough to be men. This is where Nagama went. Nagama's father was chief of the tribe. Nagla Nagama watched as his father spoke. As the eldest son, Nagama would one day become the chief. His name itself, Nagama, went tomorrow in the Kichaga language. What are they discussing, Nagama asked his friend. It has something to do with the mountain. Everything has something to do with the mountain, said Nagama. The Chaga people lived on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. The mountain was sacred. It was the place between heaven and earth. Yeah, man, see his giraffe. Nice job. The man stopped talking, and his father came toward him. The man in the car waved to me, Nagama said. He's the leader of the country. But you are the chief. I'm in charge of our tribe. He's in charge of our country. He asked us to climb the mountain to mark our independence. Independence? The white people ruled, but now we are free. Tomorrow, the men of the tribe will climb the mountain. I will be ready. No, Nagama, it is only the men. But I'm almost a man. Not yet. Nagama didn't argue, but he did not agree either. Uh, look, look what I found. At first light, the men started up the slope. 
Nagama's father was at the front. Each man carried a heavy pack. He con it contained enough food for three days, a blanket for warmth, a gourd for water, and as much wood as a man could carry. And as the last of the men turned the corner, one more figure trailed after them. Nagama. So look at this. Nagama is following, even though he was told not to. And he's following them up the mountain. Do you think a little kid can go all the way up that big, tall mountain? That's going to be hard work. Those at the back of the line saw the boy behind them. They thought he would follow for a while, get tired, and go back home. But he moved when they moved and rested when they rested. He was with them, but apart. All of the men had been to the top of the mountain before, some of them dozens of times. When people climbed the mountain, it was always with Chaga tribesmen as guides and porters. They were the people of the mountain. As they climbed higher, two men waited for Nagama. You should not be here, one said. Your father told you you were not to come and you were too young. Oh, well that was yesterday, Nagama said. Today, I am not as young. That's my favorite line because that's a good line to use. If you're a kid and your parents are going to tell you to go to bed tonight, and say it's your bedtime, you can say, no, that was my bedtime yesterday. Today, I'm older. I get a later bedtime. It's a pretty good argument. I don't think it's going to work with your families, but it's a good argument, right? Yeah. With each step, there was less air to breathe and the climb was more difficult. The men stopped for the night. They gathered, taking shelter to sleep. Nagama was alone and cold. He wrapped the blanket around him tightly, so was Dad probably knows that he's there, but he's not coming to help him yet. He's probably a little bit mad at him, but also a little bit proud of him, and he's letting him do it himself. So he's sleeping in the cold mountain by himself. Nagama awoke with a start. He caught sight of the men in the distance moving up the slope. He was cold and stiff. He wanted to go back. Instead, he rushed to follow them. By now, they all knew he was with them. His father had been informed, but he had answered, No, I told my son not to come, so I know it is not him. Part of him was angry, but he was also proud of his son, Nagama, who would be dad. a fine chief one day. There's his dad right there. So he's the chief. So you can tell, you can tell by his face, he is a little bit proud of his son for coming all this way. But he doesn't want to let him know that yet, because he has disobeying him. Throughout the day, they climbed. Each step was harder than the last. The pack on Nagama's back felt so heavy, like it was trying to drag him back down the slope. They moved on past the glaciers and past Stella Point. I have a Each breath was harder to catch than the last. You do have a backpack. Nagama wondered if the top of the mountain would ever arrive. And you can see they're all helping each other as they go up the mountain. Nagama is still with them a little farther back, but he's doing it. It's pretty good. Finally, as the sun was setting, they reached Yuhuru Peak, which is Freedom Peak, the highest place in all of Africa. The that. men gathered on the peak and each removed the wood from their backpack. Nagama crept forward and added the what pieces from that? his pack. His father held the torch in the air, ready to throw it into the pile. He turned to Nagama and motioned for him to come forward. Nagama was afraid of what he might say. This is for you, his father said, holding out the torch. Me? The fire is for the future of our country, and the future belongs to the children, to you, Nagama. The future belongs to tomorrow. So again, he is proud of his son, and he lets his son light the torch at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Nagama took the torch and threw it onto the pile. The flame caught. It got bigger and bigger, so bright that it could be seen from afar. Nagama was sure it could be seen all across Africa. The candle had been lit. Freedom had arrived. A new country had been born, and that is the story of how Tanzania, the country in Africa, came to be. The last part is a little bit of an afterword, and again, uh, I talked to you a little bit about what happened in the Chaga people. Uh, I, the, pri the Prime Minister's name, or the President's name, the first one, is, is Julius Nair, and he was one of the freedom fighters and became the first President of Nigeria. He's a pretty uh, popular, he brought peace to, to Tanzania, and the things from there. Uh, so that is the story of Light a Can. It's a pretty good story. I enjoyed that one. I'm going to come back up and say your goodbyes. Come back up. Did you like that book, Ayo? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit difficult for a three-year-old, but you did a good job. Maddie, did you like it? Yeah. And like I said, this is a 
actually a fiction story based on true events, but Nagama is not uh, a real character, and he didn't really light the torch, although a torch was lit on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro to signify Tanzania's uh, independence um, as a country. Um, so it's kind of neat that it kind of gels a little bit of fiction and non-fiction in there. And that's our story, the first one of at least seven that we will do of the Solar Bridge Express. And we'll see about getting uh, some of the chapter books on there as well. That's it for me. Say goodbye. Bye. If you have any questions or want to leave a comment at the bottom, you're welcome to do so. And there it is, Light a Candle, our first Silver Birch Express.